Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle, Middle Discourses 71. Title of the discourse is to Vashikota on three knowledges. Uh, <coughs> the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read the discourse and get your own insights. Uh, so basically the context here is that Buddha was staying near Vesali in the, at the Great Wood in the hall with the peak troop. And he went and met the uh, wanderer uh, named Vachagota. He was also living in the same vicinity, single lotus monastery of the wanderers. So uh, Vachagota asked Buddha that, uh, um, uh, that I have heard that uh, the ascetic Gautama claims to be all-knowing and all-seeing, to know and see everything without exception. Thus, knowledge and vision are constantly and continuously present to me while walking, standing, sleeping and waking. So he was asking whether what, you, what people are saying about you, that you possess and you claim that uh, you possess these, these kind of uh, knowledges, is that right? So uh, Buddha said, Vacha, those who say this do not represent, do not repeat what I have said and they misrepresent me with what is false and untrue. So Vacha, Vacha Gota wanted to just clarify on this aspect with the Buddha and Buddha said that it is false. I, they are misrepresenting those who are saying this thing. Then... Then Vachagotha said that please explain to me what knowledges do you possess, right? And uh, so then Bud uh, so Buddha said the ascetic Gautama has three knowledges uh, and uh, what I tell you now, if you tell uh, to the others, you will be rep correctly representing Buddha's teaching and what Buddha possesses, right? So again, this goes back to the three knowledges that Buddha gained when he attained enlightenment. On the night of his enlightenment, he got the three knowledges. So again, the three knowledges are getting repeated here. First knowledge is for Vacha, Buddha is saying to Vacha, whenever I want, I recollect my mind, I recollect my many kinds of past lives. Whenever I want, I, Buddha is saying, I am able to recollect my many kinds of past lives. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000, 100,000 rebirths, many eons of the world contracting Many eons of the world expanding, many eons of the world contracting and expanding. Then Buddha says that there I was named this, my clan was this, I looked like this, this was my food, this was how I felt pleasure and pain, this was how my life ended. When I passed away, I was reborn something else. There too, I was named this, my clan was this, I looked like this. Right? So Buddha said, I whenever I want, I can recollect this thing with features and details. <clears throat> second knowledge that Buddha had was uh, Buddha possessed was whenever I want with clairvoyance that is purified and superhuman I see sentient beings passing away and being reborn inferior and superior beautiful and ugly in a good place or a bad place I understand how sentient beings are reborn according to their deeds so this was the realization of the Buddha uh, that beings re get reborn as per their deeds right as per their actions and that is where there was this discourse Buddha gave. No amount of prayers or worship or rituals that you do will determine how a being is reborn. It is solely on account of the actions that he performs. Right? So whatever is the karmic force that we have at the time of our death, the karmic structure or the force, accordingly the person chooses the next rebirth and in whichever realm. So there are a total of 31 realms in whichever realm. He chooses the birth. So Buddha says that it's all about the deeds and he got this on. So that's why if you see the Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path that is totally built on purifying our mind, body, speech, right? Our conduct, developing our mind and getting the wisdom. Because that only will determine where we get reborn and how we get free from suffering. Right? So, so Buddha says, and there is another discourse where Buddha said that when I tell someone mendicant that after being other mendicants that this mendicant when he uh, died, he got born in a heavenly realm or a, uh, he became a fully arahant. I don't say this because I want to show off my abilities. It is to basically inspire the practicing mendicant that this mendicant, he practiced like this, he got reborn in a higher world and this way the existing mendicants who are practicing, they also, you know, get more encouraged to practice. So that is also coming out in one of the other suttas. Third knowledge is, I have realized the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life. 
I live having realized it with my own insight due to the ending of defilements. That means Buddha is saying, I have realized the undefiled freedom of heart. That means now that I have realized it cannot be again turned back and freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom in this very life, I live having realized with my own insight. So Buddha said, I did not have a teacher. I, Buddha came across several teachers, but what the final understanding that he got was only due to his own efforts and due to his own insights. Other teachers that he met, Alara Kamala and Udakka in his six year journey, they could only take him to a certain level. They could not take him to beyond that, right? So that is the three knowledges that Buddha got, right? Now come to some additional questions that uh, Vachagota uh, uh, put and let's see what Buddha's answer was. Wonder Vachagota asked to the Buddha, Master Gautama, are there any lay people who, without giving up the fetter of lay life, make an end to suffering when the body breaks up? And this is a very, very pertinent question, friends. Uh, for people like you and me, we are lay people on the path of the Buddha. So question was, again I am re reciting the question, are there any lay people who, without giving up the fetter of lay life, right, make an end to suffering, right? Fetter means chain, without giving up the chain of lay life. That means without going into homelessness or being in a lay life, but completely ending this a chain of attachment. Will they be able to make an end of the suffering? Now, guess what's the response of Buddha? The response to, of Buddha was no vacha. That means... If you are in a lay life, Buddha said, no, uh, full end to suffering is not possible if you are in a lay life, unless of course, this, and this is just my little understanding as of this point, I will study the commentaries and all to get a more final idea. When Buddha talks about the fetter of lay life, it is basically meant the inner the attachment towards the possessions, family, everything. So two options is either live in a either go from lay life to homelessness which most of us cannot do because of where we are unless someone is like very very adamant at uh, using this life for complete devotion to the dhamma uh, definitely that can be done from lay life to homelessness you go you become a mendicant and then the route becomes open for you but those who are remaining in lay life there is this thing that either you totally eliminate all the fetters of lay life while living in a layer. Now, this is practically impossible. Practically, it's not totally impossible, but near to impossible. Right? So, what basically, the point here is, we should not get into this thing that, oh, then what's the point of, you know, all the practice if I'm not able to end the suffering? No. There are various stages in the level of awakening. Like, first is stream entry. If you achieve stream entry, then you will never, there are only seven more lives. Right? Then it's a one returner, non-returner, or arahanship. These are the levels, the stages of awakening. So our task is like, we do not go too much into focusing on the goal. We focus on our daily practice. And our daily practice in this real life, wherever we are right now. See, a lot of things we cannot change. But where, wherever we are and where we can practice, we just practice. And try to reduce our fetters, our chains of you know greed, and anger, delusion, all these things. And see if we can reach the stream, at least the stream entry level. And then from this stream entry, in the next up to seven lives, we will be bound for awakening. That means we will be maybe born in a family of uh, where we continue our learning of the Buddha or born in realms where Buddhas are teaching. Right? So we have to just continue our work. Don't get dejected by this very fact that Buddha is that, that lay people cannot end their suffering. Because see, Buddha was realistic. He did not like put like wrong, wrong expectations. The in the lay life, the foundations and the attachments are so much that the the freedom from attachment that is required for ending of suffering is very very difficult, right? So just take either you have to take that hard decision of moving as a as a mendicant, as a monk or a nun, right? Leaving all attachments or in this lay life try to reduce your attachments as much as possible, right? Okay. But then there are any lay then. Read the second question of Vachagota. There are any lay people who without giving up the fetters of lay life go to heaven. That is a very positive response what Buddha gives. There is not just 100 lay people vacha or 2 or 3 or 4 or 500. But many more that who without giving up the fetter of lay life go to heaven when the body breaks up. So Buddha is very very uh, you know, giving a positive response that if you even if you don't give the fetter of lay life you can go in the higher realms, heavenly realms. 
Now, there what happens, the precious thing that happens is, we get more easy, it's more easy for us to keep practicing Buddha's Dhamma, right? As compared to the problems that we have in the this life, in the heavenly life, the problems are reduced that much, right? So, that is said. Then Master Gautama, are there any Ajivaka ascetics? Now, Ajivaka was a separate kind of a, uh, uh, a separate uh, stream in the Shamana, uh, uh, Shamana movement. Like one is a Buddhist, Buddh Buddhism, then Jainism, then Ajivaka ascetics were also there. They used to basically believe in determinism, right? That uh, there is, everything is determined by fate. Whatever you do, uh, the, there is no cause and effect, right? And this totally goes against the Buddha's teaching of cause and effect. That sentient beings get born, rebirth according to their deeds. They said that everything is predestined. And they lived a very extreme life. So it was said that if everything is predestined, then the biggest criticism for them was, then why do you live in a very uh, hard way? Then might as well don't even do anything, no? So, uh, so, so uh, there was this question, uh, are there any Ajivika ascetics who make an end to suffering when the body breaks up? Buddha says no. That was again a clear no that they don't. Then he says, but there are any Ajivika ascetics who go to heaven when the body breaks up? Now, Buddha says, Vacha, when I recollect, so Buddha could recollect like many, many eons. And he says, when I recollect the past 91 eons, I can't find any Ajivika ascetics who have gone into heaven except one. And he taught the efficacy of deeds and action. So Buddha came back to this thing about the person teaching the efficacy, teaching the Dhamma, efficacy of cause and effect, acts and results. Only that one ascetic went to heaven, rest all didn't. In that case, Master Gautama, the sectarian tenets are empty even of a chance to go to heaven. So here basically, uh, Vachagota is talking about this Ajivika sect, that the this sect, they are even empty even a chance to go to heaven. That means he was like kind of putting that them down, that because of their whatever their thought processes and philosophy is, they don't even have a chance in heaven. Right? So, so Buddha said, yes, Vacha, the sectarian tenets are empty, even with a chance to go to heaven. Right? This is what the Buddha said. So that's why the wandered Vacha, Gota was happy with what the Buddha said. Right? So this was the three knowledges. It's a short discourse. I hope this was useful. Do check out the link for the complete discourse. Do share your learnings, thoughts in the uh, comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.